this is a mini AI art app that I've built with stable diffusion and bubble. The way it works is you type in a celebrity's name into the input box and it then calls an API that generates a Grand Theft Auto influence portrait of that celebrity. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can create an AI art app like this and how to integrate stable diffusion into your bubble app. Before we get into building out the various workflows associated with this, we're going to need to configure a few things. The first thing you're going to need to do is sign up to replicate.com. You can run Stable Diffusion locally on your own machine, but the only way I currently know of accessing it via API is using replicate.com. Please note you will need a GitHub account to sign up to replicate.com. Replicate.com is a paid service, so we are going to need to put in our credit card details, but I'll come on to that in a minute. You're also going to need to install the Stable Diffusion Replicate plugin. This is a paid plugin that I've developed myself, and you can find it in the Plugins tab of your Bubble Editor by searching for Stable Diffusion. Once you've installed the plugin, we're going to need to put in some API keys. And we get these API keys from replicate.com. So if you go back to Replicate, and go to your account section. This will be where you're going to be prompted to put in your credit card details. It's not too expensive. So far for me, it's worked out as a one cent every time we create an image. Once you do have your credit card details put in, you'll see there's going to be a new section here called API token. You can copy that token and paste it into the API key input field. Importantly, before we do that, we're going to need to write in token and a space and then paste in the API key. Of course, you're going to have to use the live keys in the production mode and in development mode. Once you've configured all this, what you'll notice is if we create a button and then create a workflow associated with that button, we will have two additional actions under the plugin sections of the workflow actions. We're going to have stable diffusion create prediction and stable diffusion get prediction. The create prediction workflow essentially takes all the inputs that we're going to give to the stable diffusion model. You can see here there's a range of them and we're going to go through them in a minute. And then the stable diffusion get prediction basically gets the output from the create prediction workflow using the prediction ID. Before building any actions in Bubble, I think it's probably useful to make a prediction or two in the replicate UI itself. So if you go to the Explore tab at the very top of the page, you'll see there's a range of models we can choose from. It's the Stable Diffusion model that we're concerned with for this tutorial. And what you'll see is there's a bunch of inputs here on the left-hand side. And once you put these in and click Submit, you're going to get an output on the right-hand side, the output being an image. So I'm just going to change the default prompt here to a man going for a walk with his dog on the moon. And I'm also going to put in cartoon after this. And I'm going to scroll down, just give you a sense of the other fields here. And if we click submit, we can see the model is taking that text and generating an image from it. And we get this cartoon-like image of an astronaut going for a walk with his dog on the moon. Not bad. There's definitely some things we could do to improve this. I'm just going to give you a sense of other styles you can use as well. There's plenty of other tutorials out there on how to use stable diffusion, so I'm not going to focus too much on optimizing the inputs. But you can see here, here's another version of it. Not quite as good this time around, so it certainly does take some experimenting. I have come across some cool prompts, and this is one of my favorites. It basically puts the subject, which is basically like a well-known person, and puts them in a dramatic-looking movie poster. So I'm going to put in Walter White for this one. And you'll see here, as we get the output, it's not a bad image at all. Definitely impressive for something that's completely machine generated. I'm going to play around with some of these inputs. I'm going to change the width to 768. I'm also going to increase the number of steps, which is going to give it more detail. And I'm going to increase this from 50 up to 60. And I'm going to click Submit. And it's just running the prediction. You can see this does take a while. And we get this pretty impressive looking poster. So now that we know how to create some things in Replicate, let's try and do the same thing using the plugin in our bubble app. So I'm going to delete that get prediction workflow for a second. But if we look at the create prediction inputs here, 
what I'm going to do is try and recreate this and recreate it in the plugin. So I'm going to paste in the prompt there, exact same prompt that we had in replicate. The width is going to be the same at 512, but I am going to change the height to 768. I'm also going to increase the num inference, which is basically the number of steps that the model takes in producing images. Typically more detailed images come out of more steps, although there is a limit how effective this can be. Anyway, I'm changing that now from 30 to 56. I'm leaving the guidance scale at 7.5. And you can see the seed here is blank in replicate. And when it's left blank in replicate, we just get a random seed. The seed is essentially the kind of base uh, style that it's using. And we're going to see that's going to cause an issue in a second. But for now, I want to go back into database and bubble. And I want to create a new data type called prediction because we do want to save down some data associated with the predictions we create. We're going to save each prediction's ID because that's what we're going to call to get the prediction using the other action in a while. I'm also going to save down the prompt just so I have it as a record. So we're going to save that as a text. And then we're going to, most importantly of all, say then the image that is generated. So that field type is going to be image. I'm going to add in another step after creating the prediction just to save down the relevant information. So I'm going to create a new thing and I'm creating that prediction. The ID is going to be the result of step one and its ID. Similarly, prompt is going to be the result of step one and its input prompt. So this is the input that we're sending. I'm going to put an image in a minute, but for now I'm actually going to leave this blank. So we are creating our prediction and we're saving down the relevant data. I'm just going to change this button here from edit me to create prediction. And then I'm going to preview this and we're going to see what's going to happen. So that's loaded up now. And when I click on the create prediction button, you can see something is happening from the progress bar at the top. So we're just going to check out what has actually come from creating that prediction. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our bubble database. And if we go into app data, we'll see that a prediction has been created here. We have its ID saved down. And we have the prompt saved down. There is no image yet. You might remember I didn't save down the image. There is a reason for that. And I'll come on to that in a second. And if we go back onto replicate, we can actually see the prediction as well. So if we go into our dashboard, these are a list of all the predictions that I have made using my replicate account. And you'll see that our prediction actually failed. And the reason our prediction failed is because we didn't have an integer in for the seed. So we left the seed blank in our bubble workflow. I'm just going to show that here now. And because we left it blank, it threw that error. Now, if we go back into replicate and we go back to the section where we're actually generating the model or generating the prediction using the model itself. So it's going to go in here. You can see that the seed is also blank and it works fine because it randomizes the seed. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to randomize the seed number in our bubble app. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert dynamic data. I'm going to go to calculate formula. And then I'm going to choose generate random string. I'm going to set the length of characters here to be eight. And I'm only going to use numbers because remember we do need an integer. So it's essentially going to randomize an eight string number. So let's refresh our bubble page and we put that in and let's create the prediction again. So again, we can see the progress bar went through there pretty quickly. So let's go into our database and we can see now there's a second prediction. And we have the ID saved down. We have the same prompt as last time. And if we go into replicate, we can take a look at if it was successful or not. So again, going to our dashboard and we can see this one was indeed a success. So progress there. You can see there has a random seed number and a pretty nice looking image. So pretty happy with the output of that. So next thing we need to do is we need to be able to save that image down in our bubble database. There's no use in creating it, but we can't actually access it in bubble. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new page and I'm going to call this page result. I'm going to clone it from the next page just because I've done some formatting around the style of that page. And I'm going to delete the existing button because there is no need for it. And I'm going to go to workflow. Before I go to workflow, I'm going to set the type of content on the page to be prediction. Because what we're actually going to do is we're going to send a prediction we create on the index page to this page. The workflow action we're putting in is when the page is loaded, we're going to get prediction. And the prediction ID is going to be the current page's prediction ID. So we go down to current page prediction and its ID. So the idea is we're sending a prediction from the index page to the result page. After we get the prediction, we're going to make a change to it. And we're going to change the current page prediction's image. Because you might remember, up until now, we haven't actually saved out the image. And the image is going to be the result of step one and its results and then we're going to get the first item just because we're only going to have one result for this and then we're going to get output output is essentially the image url which in turn will save down the image so now let's go back to the index page and we're going to add in a couple of steps after we create the prediction uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to navigate to the result page and we're going to send the prediction that we created during this workflow. So the data we're sending is going to be the result of step two. And because step two is in itself a prediction, we don't need to put anything else in. We want to put in one more step before we navigate to the result page. And it's actually going to be a slight pause. As you'll see here from the runtime of all the predictions I've made on Replicate, it does take a few seconds for the model to generate the image. So I'm going to insert an action before going to page result. And I was going to be adding a pause before the next section. I'm going to leave it in as a thousand milliseconds for now. So then let's go back to our result page. And we're going to put in an image element. And I'm going to make this the same dimensions as the image that we're generating with our create prediction step. So that's going to be 512 width and 768 height. I'm going to set them as fixed parameters. The dynamic image we're going to use is the current page predictions image. You might remember when we're loading this page up, we're getting the prediction associated with the page, and then it's going to be saved down in the database and should show up there. Okay, so let's see how all this works. We're going to go to preview, and we're going to go to create prediction. And again, we can see that's going to run. And I was expecting that to wait a bit longer and not immediately go to the result page. And I think what I've done there is I've missed a zero when I was putting in the pause between creating the prediction and navigating to the index page or the result page. So I'm going to put in an extra zero there. So now rather than one second, it's going to be 10 seconds. So I'm just going to refresh my bubble app and go back to the index page. We're going to create a prediction. And you can see here it's taking much longer this time because, again, I've put in that 10 second pause. But you can play around with this yourself as to what's the optimal pause in between creating the prediction and actually navigating to the next page. But when we navigate to the result page, we get this portrait in of Walter White. And if we go to our bubble database, what we should see is that image is going to be saved down in the prediction that was created as part of that process. And sure enough, you can see there we have the image saved down. The last thing I want to do is just go back to the mini app that I demoed in the intro and show you how I have it set up. So basically, I found this prompt that I really like. And if we click on the generate button here and look at the workflow associated with it, we can see that in the first step, I'm creating a prediction. And this is the prompt here that I really like. I also have a specific seed you can see down the end there that I'm using for this generation. And what I'm basically doing is just putting in whatever's in the input box as the first part of that prompt. So the celebrity's name. Then I'm just saving down the ID uh, like we did in our other example and going to the result page. Again, much like I showed in the previous example on the result page, the type of data itself is prediction. And we're getting the current page predictions ID. And we're loading up the image that we're getting from that prediction. So let's just do another quick example. I'm going to put in Robert Downey Jr. this time. 
uh, once we click on generate we're creating that prediction it's calculating the image in the background via the api that's hooked up to replicate and then we're going to the result page in the background now it's going to be loading up that get prediction workflow and saving that then to the database and then the image is displayed on the page i've done a bunch of these i think are kind of interesting to see a load together and just goes to show the how powerful the stable diffusion text to model is you can see here that some are more accurate than others but overall a really impressive piece of technology and something you can implement into your own bubble app